All right. Welcome to Mr. Salcedo's YouTube videos. This is the last lesson of the first semester, and it's all about the types of forces that exist between different molecules. Okay, so we have this flow chart. You have to be able to use this flow chart. You don't have to memorize it or anything, but you have to be able to use it. So the first thing is intermolecular forces. These are all different types of intermolecular forces. The first thing you want to do if you're trying to figure out what type of intermolecular force is interacting <clears throat> sorry, between two different molecules is, is or are these molecules polar? If the answer is yes, there's another question to answer. Do you have hydrogen and nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine involved? If yes, then that is a type of hydrogen bonding. If not, it is a dipole-dipole interaction. And the nice thing is, if they're not polar to begin with, you know they're a London dispersion force. Okay, so here we go. Intermolecular forces, those are temporary forces. Okay, these are not bonds like covalent or ionic bonds. Okay, where they're, you know, these are temporary. They are forces of attraction, think of them like magnets that are going to like temporarily attract positives or negatives, okay, or partial positives and partial negatives. So there are three major types. The first is called a dipole-dipole interaction. This is an attractive force that occurs between two or more polar molecules. So just generally speaking, if you have polar molecules, you're going to have dipole-dipole interactions. Now this interaction is caused by that difference in negativity. So electronegativity uh, comes back and we have our partial negatives and our partial positives, and they're going to cause an attraction. So if I have two HCl molecules next to each other, the negative or more electronegative atom, which is the Cl, is going to be attracted to the more electropositive or less electronegative atom here, which is our hydrogen. And so you're going to get HCl molecules that are going to want to stick together. They're going to want to stick together because of that, because of that attraction. You can see that they can be attracted in two ways. So this is the first way, right? We have this kind of interaction. They can also be attracted this way. So if I put the HCl above it and then flipped it so that I had a Cl here and an H there, that's another form of a dipole-dipole interaction. Now, let's take a look. I have HCl and I have HBr, okay? So if I were to draw the Lewis dot structures for them, I would draw them like this, okay? So I have my my HCl, my HBr. It doesn't matter really whether the H goes here or the Cl goes here. It doesn't actually make a difference. But let's look at the electronegativities of those, right? You can even see this is more electronegative. It has way more electrons around it. This is more or less electronegative, sorry. This is, again, electronegative. This is less electronegative. So these are going to be attracted to one another, this hydrogen and this Br. And so we draw that attraction as normally like a little dashed line or something just to show that they're being attracted to one another. Now, what if I had pure SO2? I just had a bunch of SO2. So if I had SO2, here's one way of, you know, kind of making a, a, a slightly different picture, but also kind of cool, is if I have SO2, I can draw two SO2 molecules. Which, ones of, which one of these elements, oxygen or sulfur, is more electronegative? Well, it just so happens to be oxygen is more electronegative. So if I were to draw these, I could have, you know, these this area here is going to be more electronegative. This is going to be less electronegative. And then same thing uh, here. So what would I do? I would draw that again as an attraction, a little dashed line. This sulfur is going to be attracted to these oxygens here. It's going to want to pull them closer. And so you get a dipole-dipole interaction. All right, next up. Now, hydrogen bonding is a special type of attractive force, okay? It occurs also between two polar molecules, but it specifically occurs only between hydrogen, hence the hydrogen bonding, and highly electric, or highly electronegative, sorry, uh, atoms like nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, okay? So if you see H and you see NO or F, and they're polar, that's probably gonna be a hydrogen bond that's forming. Now, hydrogen bonding is responsible for very important properties that water has, because water has hydrogen bonding. I mean, you have hydrogen and you have oxygen in water, and it's, again, the most important substance for living things. So the first one is that it explains the cohesive properties that water has, which is the ability for molecules to stick to each other. That's why we get water droplets, okay? Adhesion is the ability for water to stick to other su uh, surfaces or substances, and that, again, water droplets form on a bunch of different things. Surface tension, that's the ability for a liquid to resist the force applied to it. And then the heat capacity, which is the amount of energy it takes in order to, you know, kind of evaporate or heat up uh, water. It takes a lot of energy to do that. And so hydrogen bonding explains all four of these properties that water has. 
Water also has an extremely high surface tension and a high heat capacity. And so if you picture water molecules, this is the reason why the oxygens and hydrogens are all attracted to one another. And so you form these nice organized shapes. So let's try to draw these, right? We have H2O, we have NH3. So if I were to draw H2O, NH3, I'm drawing them geometrically correct. Which ones are going to be our negatives and positives? Well, oxygen's more electronegative, nitrogen's more electronegative, and hydrogen's obviously not very electronegative at all. So what would I do? I would draw again a dashed line or a dotted line to show this oxygen here is going to be attracted to these hydrogens. And this nitrogen, if there was another water molecule, would be attracted to these hydrogens. And it just kind of forms this nice web. What about HF and H2O? HF looks like this, H2O looks like that. Yeah, I know I kind of drew it a little weird here. Um, but again, what are our positives and negatives? Fluorine is the most electronegative atom, and again, hydrogen is not very electronegative. It's always going to be a delta positive. So when I am looking at my attraction, this fluorine would be attracted to these hydrogens. And again, if I were to add another HF here, this oxygen would be attracted to the hydrogens over here. Now, last but not least, we have London dispersion forces, sometimes called van der Waals forces. They're the exact same thing. It's an attractive force that occurs between nonpolar molecules, but also, I'll just say this, all molecules have a form of London dispersion, okay? So it doesn't matter. Even polar things also do this. But for now, all we care about are that nonpolar things have them because they're the weakest form of attraction. And it's caused by just fluctuations in electrons. Nonpolar molecules have an even pull of electrons, right? So this force really only acts on um, the fact that you have maybe every now and then, right? Let's say everything's spread out evenly, but then occasionally, because of randomness, these electrons can just move to one end or the other end, or can build up on one side and another side. And you can get this kind of pseudo attraction happening, even in nonpolar things. So they can act like they're polar, but not for very long and not very strongly. Okay, hydrogen bonding and stuff is way, way stronger. So let's look at those, right? Even pull of electrons. Even pull of electrons. The oxygens are pulling it this way. This oxygen's pulling it this way. So everything kind of evens out in the middle. SO3, again, I've got, if I were to draw this trigonal planar, everything's being pulled equally in all directions. There's no attraction here other than maybe every now and then the electrons build up on this side, or maybe the electrons build up on this hydrogen every now and then, and then build up on this hydrogen every now and then. And so what you end up with is just kind of like, you know, this very light um, attraction. And so that's where our chart came from. Now, strengths of intermolecular forces. If you were to rank them, the ranking goes like this. Hydrogen bonding is the strongest, dipole-dipole, and then London is the weakest. All right, so that was it. If you have any questions, let me know. That was our last lesson.